everyone, welcome to Camping with Steve. Today I'm trying out a really small camping gear setup. Look at that. Uh, that big humongous backpack I have is not quite conducive with stealth camping. But this is actually a carry-on sized approved bag and I fit everything I need in here. And I've got uh, a new bivy today to try out because the hammock is really great for stealth but you need trees and that's not always the case. So I will uh, open this up, I'll show you exactly what I got in the bag and then we'll set this up and have a little camp out. This outside bag here has got uh, extra batteries and the GoPro and some camera equipment. But the rest of it is the camping gear. I've got a pot uh, from the kitchen because I couldn't find my good smaller one. It's kind of packed up right now in a sea can. There is a liter of water or a quart. We got folding tripod stool. Uh, this one came from a dollar store in Canada. We have Dollarama. There may be something similar available. Uh, for some reason it was four dollars from the dollar store. But I guess they don't specify how many dollars. I got this uh, little uh, Thermarest Neo Air because uh, it packs up so small. Canadian MRE. Today is going to be pasta stuffed with ricotta. Yum. My sleeping bag. The camouflage bivy. Um, this is gear top. Um, I found it on Amazon and it was, uh, it didn't look too bad for reviews. We all know what this is. And uh, today I just got one of these emergency stoves. And we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, these are like an SBIT stove or I don't know what the deal is. But uh, so there it is. There is everything I've got. Fits in here. Perfect for an overnighter. So let's see if we can get this tent set up and see what it looks like. Yeah. Trampling down a little spot here in the tall grass for this tent. They advertise this as setting up in five minutes. So it's a bit, a bit longer than a lot of the setups for the hammock and just sleeping under the stars. But we will see what happens. It is, it's a traditional camouflage. It's not, not a real modern one. This may stand out a little bit, unless you're in the proper type of uh, area. So far from what I'm seeing, this doesn't look too, too claustrophobic, which is good. And if you're wondering, we're not stealth camping tonight. You don't try out new gear on a stealth, that's for sure. This has some things in common with uh, one pole tents. The very small ones that have one pole always rely on having stakes down and guy wires out. I'm not liking the stealth appearance of this, but then again, I'm not dressed for stealth at the moment because this is just a normal, relaxing, non-stealthy trip. It does appear that you can get away with one string tied down at one end and a couple of pegs on the other. I'm not going to go nuts with these stakes. I'll save them for when I start losing them and I got extras. In the right woods, this would work. But this is more of the camo to look cool than the camo to be camo. Okay, this should uh, be spacious enough for me. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good size. It's not like those absolute survival bivvies that are tiny, tiny, tiny. Let's 
so you inflate. Couldn't be easier. Couldn't be easier. I'm trying to get this done in the daylight so I'm not fumbling around in the dark. And I started to get thirsty and sweaty because it was a little cool today and I threw this on, but all this setup is giving me a workout. While this thing inflates, the shelter was step number one. Step number two is a little Cronenberg. Yeah, now we're talking. I do have to give it a few extra puffs because uh, this does a pretty good job, but it's just running on two tiny little AA batteries. Yeah, looks sufficiently plump. Okay, and I'm pretty militant about keeping the screens shut. And uh, let's see, it is. Um, Pretty bare bones in this thing. There's, there's no pockets to. Oh, there's there's one little pocket at the edge that I can put stuff in. At the foot end of this one, there is a little compartment area where you could keep something kind of dry if it's a very small bag, which thankfully it is. Tuck that under there. Oh, it doesn't get better than that. This is uh, kind of a necessity because a lot of the really good stealth camping spots that I've come across. There aren't the trees in the right spots and I've ended up either just sleeping on the ground or using the hammock as a bivy and that doesn't work very good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that to anyone. But the prime stealth camping time is coming up and that is the autumn, like basically September, October. Yeah, that's kind of all we get here. Uh, we don't get much of a fall, but uh, there's still leaves on the trees. The temperature is more reasonable. This actually will blend in probably a little bit better once there starts to be a little bit color on the trees. And <coughs> swallowed a, a little bug there. Okay, and yeah, so I gotta get all the stealth camping done before it gets really, really cold because that adds a whole other problem uh, trying to get out there with a lot of gear to stay warm. So this is the fleeting moment in time where I can use a small, small pack like this and the adventures are gonna be great. So the low profile of this thing is awesome. In tall grass, it could be whatever color you want. <laughs> it's not gonna be seen. So this will do quite good in the woods. There's a lot of wood around, but I'm not gonna build a fire because it's been extremely dry this year and very hot. I don't remember the last rainfall. Um, the green luscious looking grass belies the fact that we've had plenty of 40 degree plus Celsius days this year already which is well into the 110s uh, Fahrenheit. So I'll be testing out that little cooker in a sec here and we'll see how long it'll take that thing to boil water. Now, this little emergency stove is the very first one I used on a stealth camping trip. Uh, not the same exact stove, but the same general principle. And essentially you got these little pucks in it. And you throw a few in there and you light them and you got a little cook surface. Now, there was a big debate in the comments about how this is to be used. Whether these stick in the ground and you put the pucks in like that, like a few on there, or whether you go like this and then uh, put the pot on top. Okay, this should solve any issues regarding how it should be used. Now, nah, there's still gonna be a debate, I know. It could work either way. And just for the sake of all the people that were suggesting to do it that way, I'm gonna do it that way. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? Oh yeah, it does have a smell to it. 
Uh, while this ominous smoke drifts up around this dry, dry grass, we're going to explore the contents of this pasta stuffed with ricotta. Um, Canadian IMPs, also known as MREs. And I do have some of those flameless ration heaters, but I think they're a bit old. So, what is in the bag? My favorite part is the entree pasta stuffed with ricotta. Moving right along in this little clown car of a experience. The bread product, it feels like. <laughs> Hamburger bun or pain hamburger. And that is for dipping, I guess. Uh, dessert, fruit cocktail. Um, peaches, pears, sugar, pineapples, grapes, cherries, and um, citric acid and a few other things. Yum. Uh, a little peanut butter, probably for smearing on that hamburger bun. Oh boy. Okay, I'm just gonna go out and say it. This is not the good way to use these pucks because it really is too close to the pot and it causes it to smoke out like that. So, yeah. Coffee whitener, so there must be coffee. Espresso roast coffee, fantastic. What are these? Oh, tell me it isn't jam. Oh, no, another peanut butter, so you can really load that thing up. Uh, of course, grape sports drink, yum. Frank's Red Hot, we're gonna see how much of this we need on this uh, this food. Kit Kat snack bar. You got a little pouch for mixing your drink crystals in. There we go from here. Pack matches, so you don't even have to bring a lighter with you if you got one of these. A couple of, a couple of sugar packages. Oh, no, that's a, a hand wipe sugar package. A napkin or serviette spoon to consume with and finish it all off with two packs of Tic Tacs. So that'll be great. Now this water it's getting lukewarm on me and these pucks are eh, maybe 25% burned. So I gotta just dunk this entree in there start to get it heated up. And comes this foil pouch, this foil plastic thing, which I'm sure is horrible for the environment. Um, but I'll just get that in there, warm it up. And pretty much that's about all of it that I'm gonna eat. Uh, I'll take a bite of this pain hamburger and we'll see, uh, see just how tasty that might be. Oh no, oh no, that is a grass fire. Oh yeah, Steve. Ah, oh, this is the worst day of my life. Yeah, don't start a campfire, you'll... There we go. Don't start a campfire, you'll cause a fire. Use these little pucks instead. Put this out. Okay. Well. Ooh, really hot. Okay. We're gonna try that again. Did I learn my lesson? No. Um, we're gonna try that again. And, yes. For the record, I think four of those would have boiled the water. And that would have been probably two cups of water in there. Maybe three. Okay, may as well use the matches that came with this IMP. So yeah, I can almost see my breath out here. I can, unreal, unfathomable. That has more to do with the dew point than the temperature though. So, try this again. While that cooks, I guess, It's bread time. Now, for the record, this MRE expired a few years ago. 
and they have several years of shelf life. So, um, I don't know how long a hamburger bun <laughs> is designed to last. Oh, it's got one of these little um, um, moisture absorbent things that come in electronics packages. Okay, this is going to need some of that peanut butter, I can guarantee you. Oh, <laughs> the smell. Okay, there's like one... Oh, I don't even know. Oh, boy. Oh. It doesn't even smell safe to eat. You know what? Oh. Oh, I can't. Uh, look at this thing. Like, uh, that's what it is. This is probably... 10 or more year old bread. Um, it, it won't even open up in bread form. Okay. Um, some people might not know I'm fussy about fresh baked bread. Um, yeah, no. Oh. Okay, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, these little pucks boil water, no problem. This uh, this actually seems about done. So I'll take a bite. It's uh, they're convenient, but they're certainly not low on packaging. Okay. Well. It smells better than the bun. Look at these. Wow. Okay, you gotta see this. Um, oh, it's hot. Okay. Let's see what we can show. Oh, getting bitten by a mosquito there. Okay, look at this. It's like adult Chef Boyardee, I guess. We'll see if Chef Boyardee could learn a thing or two from these guys. The sauce tastes like Chef Boyardee sauce. And we'll see what things taste like. Mm. Mm. It basically tastes like, um, tastes like Chef Boyardee. Okay, just checking out the ingredients because, well, <laughs> this, this filling looks more like meat than cheese. Mmm. Okay, well, I'm going to say I don't think Canadian IMPs are quite what I remember from my day in Air Cadets. Um, we actually loved them back then. Um, I'm going to look into s some other options that can fit in a backpack uh, with easy preparation. Now I know I get um, I get ragged on about the food I cook sometimes and a lot of it just boils down to convenience because if I'm camping you know I generally don't want to be slicing up like I did make fish and chips the one time and battered them and deep fried them but as far as serious camping, I don't know anybody that would actually do that on a backpacking trip. And for a reason, you know, people use the freeze dried and, and these things just because they're, they're out camping, enjoying the scenery and nature. The food kind of comes second. If you're hiking up a mountain, you're just concerned about getting your calories and getting your water. And if it tastes good, even better, but then, you know, you got concoctions like ramen bombs with like ramen noodles and potato flakes and a can of tuna. Um, so I have not, <laughs> I haven't subjected us to those type of meals yet, and I'll try not to do that. So I've got a whole bunch of little recipes I'm looking at. Anyway, I'm just gonna chill here for a bit, crawl into there, and 
you know, it's not a stealth video this week because I had to actually try this stuff out. And we've been working on the boat so much that there's just not a whole lot of time. But that'll all change very soon because as soon as the boat's done, get that trip done. Why do I keep eating this? And then it will be Stealth City, Stealth Fall. So most of dinner was just um, peanut butter and Kit Kat bars. And bugs are starting to really come out. So I'm gonna crawl into this thing. I'll do a quick peek inside uh, for everybody to see what it's like in there. It is quite spacious for a bivy sack. And, and tomorrow, <laughs> I'm gonna be starving. Uh, so. I'm gonna figure out something to cook for a breakfast out here on these little tabs. And uh, may have to go around and grab some eggs or something, but we'll, we'll have a little breakfast. Okay. Yeah, in here, there is this little corner pocket here. That's about it for the storage. And of course, it's your typical bivy sack here. Not gonna have tons of room in here, but you know, in a pinch, you could probably put a couple of people in here. This is quite good. Actually, I really like this. Um, it's not the smallest, not the smallest bivy in the world. I'm just gonna zip this up before I get consumed alive by mosquitoes. So it's definitely not the, the smallest one, but this does the job just fine a lot of headroom it's not claustrophobic and i'm i'm not getting a cut selling these things i just uh, thought it was a good thing so I, I bought one and i'm testing it out it's got a lot of um a lot of adventures ahead of it so i'm going to zip up here get to bed or hunker down so to speak and um yeah in the morning i'm going to be probably woken up by hunger because I normally eat uh, a meal for like 10 people not a few bites of pasta and a Kit Kat but uh, yeah that's the weight loss plan Kit Kat and a bite of pasta so I'll see you guys in the morning and then we will try to cook something um, good to eat for once cheers Good morning, everybody. Uh, that was a pretty good sleep. The only downside about this contraption is it gets hot. It does not breathe well. Like, this fly pretty much just comes down and surrounds the whole thing, so there's not any air movement. Uh, as soon as the sun starts to come out, you're gonna be cooking. But uh, this will be the perfect thing to use this fall for camping. It'll be able to keep some of the heat in. Um, I don't know. I like it. Uh, it sets up fairly quickly. And um, yeah, I am famished though, uh, due to my Kit Kat and peanut butter um, dinner last night. So I gotta hike back to the car and I think I've got um, some freeze dried breakfast food in there for emergencies. And this is a severe emergency. I did find this old thing I had in there. Uh, it's a breakfast skillet. Egg, sausage, potatoes, peppers, um, open pouch at tear mark, add two cups of boiling water to the pouch, stir well, and zip pouch closed, let stand for 15 minutes, open pouch, stir again, and enjoy. So we're going to see how much enjoyment we can get out of a peak refuel thing. Just coming to the realization that all the lightweight food is pretty bad. Um, if it's lightweight and small, I don't know. Oh, a little bug in there. There you go. So yeah, three of these uh, mystery invisible flame, strange smelling burning tablets pretty much brought it to a boil. I wouldn't say a rolling boil, but uh, an almost boil. So, should be good enough for some freeze-dried food. And 
This is gonna be my last experiment with this type of lightweight food. It is not good. And I know there's some brands that are better than others. And obviously if you're up a mountain somewhere, it's really good to have something to eat that's not trail mix. However, I am gonna stick with the devil I know and use things like actual Chef Boyardee or actual Kraft mac and cheese because uh, they, they are pretty light and I know what they taste like. It's not gonna be some mystery. And, oh yeah, that's, it looked really gross, I'm just gonna say, but uh, we'll see what happens. So, it's marinated for 15 minutes as directed. Whoa, it is pretty, uh, pretty juicy still. <laughs> I think I'll leave it to go for another another little bit here, but it actually smells pretty good. And as far as what I'm looking at, I've seen worse than this. Like, uh, yeah, the other one I tried to make, the other breakfast one years ago, I think it was my second stealth camping video ever. Um, that was, was pretty bad. <laughs> the potatoes uh, really take some time to rehydrate. Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. It, uh, it's like that. Mmm. Hot sauce. Mm-hmm. Potatoes are still crunchy, but, um, I could sit here all day waiting for this to dehydrate. Um, I'm gonna find my Frank's Red Hot from that uh, IMP, or MRE. And I'll give that a dose into here, but, mm, chewy. But before I do that, I'll start taking down this tent. And we'll time that and see how fast that goes. Because uh, I'm a fan of quick, quick setups and teardowns, especially if you're hiding from the law. much as good as could be expected and uh, yeah this is reconstituted quite nicely mm. actually not bad I would give this one one thumb up I was expecting three thumbs down but um, I do have to give a huge shout out to the folks that have donated to the beer donation fund um, I really appreciate it uh, you guys have spoken, you want to see me doing um, camping. So I'll keep it coming as long as, um, as long as I'm able and as long as people still watch. Uh, you can expect me around pretty much every week. Mm. This is a 640 calorie breakfast. Um, these, uh, these meals are pretty big, you know, um, and rightfully so, you know, like if people are seriously hiking, um, nothing wrong with, uh, like the protein in this, what was it saying? Clocks in it. 39 grams. Who needs that much protein? I don't know. Not me. I don't, uh, <laughs> I didn't hike enough. Okay. Uh, actually the eggs in this you know what they are? It's um, like the ones you get at um, the free breakfast at a hotel. That type of reconstituted eggs. So, actually, not that bad. I'm pleasantly surprised. I'll explore this brand a little bit more, but I'll explore this delicately because things could be... Um, <laughs> I'll bring backup food. 
adjusting case. That's what we call them. Yeah, I'm actually going to eat this whole thing. Okay. So should just over you what it looks like. It's um like that. Actually, not not too bad at all. For what it is. All right. Um, so thanks everybody. Thanks everybody for following along. Thanks for watching. Um, there is going to be a mix of a lot of things. Today wasn't a full-blown stealth, but this told me what I needed to know. Um, now I know this, the tent goes back in the bag, so yes, it will bag. And um, for a cool day, it'll be just perfect. So until next time, you guys have been camping with Steve, and uh, we'll see you soon on a river adventure and on a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, thanks for following along.